Hey friends, I hope you're having a fantastic day today. I drew a simple landscape. I haven't painted clouds in quite a while. That right there is from my cloud video that's done quite well on YouTube. So I, I want to paint some clouds. It's been a long time. I need the practice. So I sketched out a five by seven inch simple landscape, a little barn in there, you know, thinking about drawing you into the, the painting and then the clouds also lead you into the open space. If you want, I'll uh, scan this in and post it in my Annie Tro Art Prints Facebook group if you want this. Use it as a traceable, use it as a guide. Okay, let's have some fun. Let's set the table. I've got a five by seven inch cradled wood panel from US Art Supply. It's an inch and a half thick. I really like the thick ones. Isn't that nice? I gessoed it with clear gesso from Liquitex. You can use white. Um, I just buy the clear because then I can always add white paint to it. I um, When I put the gesso on the canvas panel, I also put some water and keep it quite thin, let it dry, and then I do another coat. And I dry it with a hair dryer, and then like 15 minutes later, I put on another coat. It will depend on the weather in your area. It says 24 hours to be dry, but I've been painting on them quickly. Where is it? Right there. Leave to dry for at least 24 hours. Oh, you can sand and reapply. I don't do that. I just on a couple of thin coats. My colors. Okay, let's see. Prussian blue, so it's a muted blue. Uh, Quinacridone magenta. They're all gonna be Liquitex. Yellow oxide. So the blue's muted, the yellow, if you don't have yellow oxide, put a little brown in your yellow. Mix a brown, put it in the yellow. Uh, that's yellow oxide, titanium white, and Mars black. Where's my Mars black? <laughs> there it is. And then I mixed a pretty periwinkle color with some quinacridone and some Prussian blue. And that's this color down here in the sky. And I just, oh, I used a three quarter inch flat brush from US Art Supply. I have links in this video's description to a lot of the supplies I use, just in case you're curious. I'm liking this one. It's quite thin. Can you see that here? It's quite thin. So you might not like that because it's not going to hold a lot of paint. Whereas like, of course that's an inch from Low Cornell. I don't know if you can see it. It's a, it has a lot, it's thicker, has more bristles. Um, here, this one you might be able to see better. This is, I think this might be a three quarter inch. It's, it is from Royal and Lang Nichols, there's end line. Can you see? Yeah, that's a lot thicker. And sometimes it can be harder to get an, an edge or a point. You get it wet and get it thin, you usually can get it to do it. Um, so you guys might like this. I've only had it a few weeks, so I don't know its durability. This all feels real nice and firm. I really like that part. Okay, uh, what else? Oh, I just put out some um, yellow oxide, some white, and then I mixed a pretty brown. It, it has a little hint of purple to it. And then, so sweeping sky, and you could be done. This could be a simple landscape. It is a simple landscape. Oh, here I just 
I, I, I like to paint the sides. I think that's nice. Now that way someone doesn't have to frame it. If they buy it, it can just sit on a shelf. So I have, you know, darker to lighter, bluer to purple gray. And then I have uh, yellow oxide that's lighter with some white, little hints of brown, that's generally lighter to darker. And then just everything goes horizontal. Just sort of lay down some dirt and some warm color. That's all I'm thinking. This is uh, yellow oxide and quite a bit of Prussian blue to make a green. This is yellow oxide and a little bit of black to make a green. Um, I don't know if you just heard freckles, but she kind of yawned. <laughs> I think, what time is it? I think I'm going to quit for tonight and then I'll be back tomorrow. I don't, I might use the traceable to get my barn on there or I might just draw it in. This is, I went about two and a quarter inches up. Okay guys, I think that sets the table. I'll be back tomorrow. Let's chat for a second here. Whoops, I just got my brush dirty. <laughs> I laid it on a dirty part of a paper towel. Alrighty. So I used, I printed out another, I scanned this in and printed it out, my sketch. And then I just traced, that's where the trees go off into the distance. So that's right here. I want that lighter and I want the clouds to kind of line up with that. And then I, I uh, trace the, the outbuilding or barn or whatever that is. So I know where that is. I, um, I put out some mixing white because it's much more transparent. Zinc white is uh, more transparent than titanium white. You might like it. I think mine's getting old. It will feel different than your titanium white when you add water to it. Um, but I also think mine's getting sticky and old. I need to buy some new. And I'm... I put in hints of where I want the clouds, but before I did that, or after I put out some mixing white, I thought, ooh, let's put a little yellow in the sky because this is dry, this is the next day. Um, and it'll bring, like I should, I should probably put some purple when I work on the landscape part, put some purples or blue in here and it helps unify your painting. So I put a little yellow with some matte medium to make it transparent and just glazed it over the top of my dry sky. So now I'm thinking I can just focus on transparent clouds and white and I've already got the color built into the sky. Okay, I do have a cloud painting video. I think I already mentioned it. I'll link it in this video's description. I also have a colorful sunset video with clouds. I'll link that one in this video's description. So I'm taking a filbert. You could use any brush. The um, popular cloud video shows, you know, I, I used a makeup brush, I used flat brushes, I used a palette knife. <laughs> you can check that out if you like. So I'm just grabbing, so I put a little water into my, my um, mixing white. But sometimes that makes that too transparent. Just trying to get it to blend a little bit. And I'm sneaking up on my clouds. I put a little titanium white in that one. I don't mind those. So maybe I'm not crazy about this one, but maybe I just need to kind of emphasize my light sun's coming from the left, kind of. I mean, it really wouldn't be. It'd be in the sky. Maybe I just kind of need to I'm going to squiggle. I'm trying to be random. I don't know if I like it going that way. One thing nice about having my um, painting dry overnight is I can scrub the background a little more vigorously and it won't pick up the sky color. 
So one thing I'm getting is a little glare from my light. I'm gonna turn it down. You guys can let me know in the comments which you liked better, the light up or the light down. I'm not getting as much glare so I can see this better. It's all right to go slow. It's kind of my normal I don't know if I like that either. Actually, I think that might be working. I just maybe need... So, oh, here, maybe this would help. So what I'm thinking is, so that's the furthest back in my trees. So we kind of have this shape going, kind of like an S. And then, you so you like an S shape kind of, you could come out this way, or you could come out this way. So I'm just kind of leading you around the painting a little bit, or this way. That's all I'm thinking. Just to have some movement in the painting. A lot of times I'll really try to keep you in the painting. So this will definitely dry darker. There, I think I like that. We'll see how it dries. So that's one thing I like about a filbert is I can get like little cloud peaks, rounded peaks. Um, I've totally done it with a flat brush. And we can come in with some titanium white once we're a little more confident. Yeah, I think that's working. And then you could come down and break up the cloud. Like I had this cloud kind of this shape. You could kind of break it up some. Now the, the paint's running out of my brush. So I'm just going to kind of... Maybe hit at the bottom of it. See how that dries. I like the mixing white, transparent white, zinc white for clouds because you can uh, control it by going slower. It'll take more layers, it'll take more time. You can totally do it with a titanium white and some uh, matte medium or just titanium white and some water. Uh, I kind of like this one. And you know what, for the next video I might change my mind as you play and learn things. Change your mind. If I mess up, I know my colors. This is the purplish with some blue. This is straight up Prussian blue and some white. I can come back and paint in some darker areas. I want to lift it up and look at it. Oh, I'll just do that quick. <laughs> oh, that's looking pretty good. I've got a white. I think that's looking pretty good. I've got quite a bit going on with the sweeping motions that I put in first. Can make almost for too busy of a sky. I think what I might do is take a little titanium white. Let's make some of them pop out. So I'm just kind of dabbing, wiggling. 
make this one pop out. Let's see if I make that pop out. So I'm kind of wanting to go like this. The, the cloud shapes kind of change as I bring bring them up in value. Just fun. But sometimes it helps to find some of the whitest white and then you can figure out what you want to do. I like that that smears up. I'm trying to decide. I knew that was going to make me nervous. <laughs> So I grabbed, wiped off my brush, grabbed a little uh, mixing white, and I'm just going to kind of play with it, smear it. I think I might stop and call it good. And of course I go. I think that might be pretty good. I think I need to work on this area to see if this needs to be stronger. Because really, the star of my show is going to be the clouds and this barn will be red. So that'll really call your attention. And then I'm going to have lines that lead you in. Okay, guys, I'll be back in a bit. friends. Let's stop and chat. So I used a little quarter inch flat brush from Royal and Langnickel because I can get a little skinny line and kind of hint at a pine tree. Um, just pretty much a stroke and if it's messy that's okay. You know for a treetop I did a side stroke and then wobbled it I think that works. I ended up using some of this, so my brown is kind of pinky. I used that for the highlights on the trees, or the lighter shade, to give them a little dimension. So I think that works. I did paint onto the side. Okay, I'll hold it still so you guys can see. The trees I think might be done. We'll f I'll know better. And so the little building uh, I originally had the roof darker, but I my light's coming from over here, shining this way. So really, this should almost be darker, too. I'm thinking that this is covering this side of the building, so that's fairly dark. If we wanna, I don't want to lose this shadow either, though. I just kind of do that and call it good. For um, one other thing I wanted to mention, so I really like these little brushes. I used a, a three over zero little liner brush from Princeton. But the thing is, can you see how it's splitting? I get it. There, I think it's a little blurry, but I think you can see it. And I can't, sometimes you can roll it. 
and get it to hold a point. But it just really, I don't know if you can see it, but it just really isn't. I think I'm going to throw it away. They don't last very long. There's not very many hairs in there. And then so I was also trying to use a number one Simply Simmons, which was is holding a point better. But then I realized, you know, I haven't used it. This is a new brush. I've only used it maybe once or twice. This is a number six from Princeton. But it'll hold, if you have thin paint, it'll hold a nice little point, even though it's a big brush. And this one should last longer because it has a lot more to support it. If that makes sense. I just thought I'd let you know. You might, you'll find what you like to use. But look how little that, hopefully you can see how little that is. And so that helped with the barn. So next I'm going to work on my uh, field. I think I'm just going to paint it greens. A lot of times, or most of the time, your trees are going to be darkest, or at least dark, because they're upright. So off in the distance they look dark. I'm just going to use a flat brush. This is a three quarter inch. No, three eighths inch. <laughs> this is a three quarter inch. I don't know if I want to use, I could maybe try to use this big one and just see how it goes. They always say use a bigger brush than you're more com than you're comfortable with. All right, let's just start with a color. So I think I kind of want Oh, I got, I hit it with my other green. Kind of wiped that off. So, oh, here's another thing that popped into my mind while I was painting during the time lapse. Use a bigger palette. I mean, use this if you like. But a lot of times I hit my other colors. I don't have a lot of room for mixing. But I want to get you in and as close as possible to my videos. Okay, I'm going to start again here. I'm grabbing a little water to thin it out. Not much. That's probably too much. Okay, so let's have like, you know what I might do? Because I'm feeling a little antsy. Is give myself some guides that I can wash off. Because I don't want to go to the corner. Which I probably, well, I, if I do, I want it to be a big stroke. So let's maybe kind of help myself here. So I cover the corner. I might deviate. I had a line in here like this. I don't know. I might. Let's see how this looks. Let's see how dark this goes down. So I'm going to take it right up to my barn with just the corner. Kind of wiggle. And then maybe draw with the edge. Can bring that over my side. Kind of a light touch. Maybe. I don't know. It's already drying. <laughs> I think this needs to be lighter. Well, wait a minute. Before we get too hung up on the values, let's get some color down. I go to the details really quick. Do you guys do that? I do. I tend to do that. Let's just get some color in here. I have to remind myself, paint big shapes to little background to foreground. All right, let's put this in. I drew it. I kind of, I liked it. I can come back and lighten it if it doesn't do what I like. I'm looking, I don't know if you, I, my head just popped in there maybe. I, I have to look around my phone to see what I'm up to. I should have probably carried that over a little bit. Paint this corner too. I'm getting glare again. I think it's just because my paint's wet. 
I do like having the light. I think overall the videos have been a little better. Thank you for sending money to support the channel. I, that's how I bought the light. Oh, and I have a new microphone because our microphone was crackling during uh, the live stream. That's actually drying darker than I thought. Layers can help. Oh, I have the same colors. A lot of times I like to have different colors um, in different corners. Let's make this corner darker. Which makes that look lighter. Which is something that was bugging me a minute ago. Okay, I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to paint a little bit in time lapse. And we might be pretty close to done. Here, maybe you want to screenshot before I... I'm not sure how much more I'm going to do. Whoops, get my thumb out of your screenshot. <laughs> Okay guys, I'll be back in a bit. Okay, let's talk about this. <laughs> I laugh because I have so many thoughts and I don't know where to start. So I added more white. It's not quite dry. So a little more white on the roof. I, I used some light yellow oxide, with, so white and, and yellow oxide. And then it dried darker, so I ended up putting a little bit of white there. Um, white and yellow oxide there. I put a little bit of white there. So what am I doing? So this ended up being stronger. So I had this corner darker. So I'm doing this with you. Now this does lead you out of the painting, but this could also lead you back in depending on how you see it. Everybody's going to see it a little differently. But what I'm doing is my strongest whites or lightest values are here. So that helps keep you in. Even though I might be leading you off the painting or I might be leading you in depending on which way you read it. And then my background basically leads you in and I'm pointing you here. So I'm bringing you in here and then I pop you over here and then I, I play with it a little bit here, bring you in a little more. So basically I'm, I'm trying to keep you going like this because this is strong. This is the star of our show, but this is quite bright. Or you could be going like this too. Everybody's going to be a little different, but that's fun. And then that was really fun. I listened to myself because I know better. And a lot of times I grab little brushes, grab this three quarter inch flat brush. Uh, this is from us art supply. I think I mentioned in this video, it's quite thin. I think that was this video and it was fun to like, let it dry brush when I noticed it was doing that. And this was wetter. Um, and just pull it over to the side. And so I'm kind of saying, you know, farm rows or field rows, or just saying a little perspective. We're coming in. This, this is pretty much one point perspective, but this I turned it so it's, it, it's a little, keep your straight lines going up and down. And then I, this angles off this way, but this actually angles off this way too. It's a little confusing. Use the traceable if that's confusing. Um, but I think that's fun. That came together quite fast as I layered it. And the layers really help entertain you and add some interest. And I end up leaving a lot more yellow than I planned on. But I like the yellow with the hints of purple. Oh, and the other thing I did 
was I wasn't getting enough contrast on the back of my roof. So I, I just put a little blob of darker purple sky in there. It's not even that neat looking. So I've been trying to paint looser and this worked. Use a bigger brush than you're comfortable with. That'll help you paint looser. It really is true. That helped me today. Let me know what you guys think uh, in the comments. I love hanging out with you guys. I, you, you all amaze me. I love our happy art community that we have going. Super appreciate your support. Great big happy art hugs. And I hope to chat with you soon. Bye guys.